This next in the news article I find absolutely fascinating. From the beginning of this national lockdown and disaster, state of disaster declared by our President Cyril Ramaphosa, there has been one surprise after the other and South Africa has not been following any of the world trends. So we are unique and we know this is a very unique country. There's many things that's happened here that's happened nowhere else in the world. But when you start to defeat what science predicts, then it becomes extra interesting. At the beginning, they said that South Africa should ramp up and have a massive spread of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This didn't happen and everyone was knocked for a six because they predictions the computer models just didn't work out and from that day on nothing has made sense it's just been one disaster after the next and this next article is no different it's from news 24 the government propaganda piece and it reads sudden unexplained spike in COVID-19 testing numbers as public labs confirm supply shortages so there's this huge news spread all over the mainstream media that we don't have enough coronavirus test kits. But all of a sudden, the lab results go through the roof. Now, this could be because of two reasons in my own mind. The one is that they are pushing out numbers that, that is fake, which I don't believe it is. The other is that the test results have been so delayed that we are only starting to see the results from two or three weeks ago coming through right now in one big heap. And that is what I predict has probably happened here. Let's read the article. A sharp decline in daily testing numbers by public laboratories was seemingly arrested this week with a comparative massive spike reported on Wednesday after a two day lull. So all of a sudden there's this huge spike coming through. And you know, they can actually warn people of this. Say before and to the public, listen here, we've had a delay in testing and we're publishing all these numbers in one go. And it will prevent news articles like this. It actually causes suspicion and many other things. Now, based on my past where I've uh, tracked many things uh, for a living in the control room at Kuburg, I know that if there's a spike, something went wrong or something happened, and you'll be able to figure out what that is by looking at other statistics and figures. Now we know that there's been a big lab backlog up until now. And what I predict has happened here is that those results were sent through in bulk and the communication to the public has been null. And that is normally what we can expect from our government. Please, if you want to get more of these news articles, there will be a number of them published today. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications. While it is accepted that testing numbers will be lower over weekends, the National Department of Health reported on Monday, meaning tests done on Sunday, that 5473 tests were done in public labs. On Tuesday, it reported 3067 tests in the previous 24 hours, being Monday. But on Wednesday, the daily number for public labs shot up to 18,065. That's by order of magnitude of more than five that's a massive change so they're talking about public labs here specifically at the same time the national health laboratory services nhls confirmed it was experiencing critical shortages of reagents and test kits so the two don't really add up tests conducted in private laboratories follow the similar trajectory but not as extreme the sudden spike just as the media and health ministers william kesey drew attention to the shortage is unexplained. Well, I've tried to explain it to you just now. The results came out late, in bulk. It remains unclear whether testing numbers reported on Wednesday account only for tests done on Tuesday or if the delay is longer than 24 hours. Well, that is obvious. Any journalist with half a math brain will be able to figure that out. But journalists want sensation and they want to create panic. Responding to queries from News24 on Wednesday, the NHLS said it was continuing to experience challenges with the supply of test kits and reagents due to factors beyond the NHLS control. What happened to millions of test kits coming from China and all these dodgy areas? 
I mean, what happened to those? Did they dump it? There's so many things that these reporters are not following up on that they should be following up on and actually doing their job instead of reporting on rubbish like this. As a result of the global shortage of extraction test kits, the supply of stock is sporadic for some of the key products. The NHLS has placed orders with the suppliers to meet our testing capacity of 36,000 tests per day. Well, at the moment, the, the 18,000 that they were speaking of now is half of that. So they're nowhere near where their target is supposed to be. So someone has been lying up until now saying that our testing was up to standard until they started realizing that we're actually falling behind. South Africa manufactures no test kits locally and relies on international companies. Big problem, people. We should always be independent. Just like we should be independent of our government as individuals and families, our country should strive to be independent of the rest of the world. But communists don't understand that, do they? South Africa manufactures no test kits locally. That's insane. How can we not manufacture test kits locally? We certainly have the equipment to do so, the companies, the know-how and all of that. We should be able to conduct tests faster and more efficient than with the older equipment than we have. We should be able to actually build up whatever industry supplies to the highest level of world standards. And there's nothing stopping us from doing that. It's happened in the past. It can happen now. About the testing. PCR testing, polymerized chain reaction is done by extracting the RNA of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which causes COVID-19 from the swab collected. This requires a small kit con containing what is known as reagents. The NHLS Explain the RNA is then reverse transcripted into DNA. This process is called extraction. Now, this is how they actually identify that the virus is present. And this form of testing is the most accurate. And in the rest of the world, they actually started testing for the remnants of you actually having contracted the virus. And this does not mean that you develop the disease. Remember that the, uh, contracting the virus and developing the disease are two separate things. And this test, that te test for RNA, is almost 100% accurate. Many of the other tests used in the lesser, uh, rest of the world, like in the USA, where they do mass testing, is less effective. Some of them only up to 80%. So your results can be heavily skewed. But our results, if they use this test correctly, should be extremely accurate. The second part of the process is the amplification of the DNA in a PCR machine. Only once amplified analysis will show where the SARS-CoV-2 is present. Now, I like the fact that in this article, they're actually medically accurate for the first time. Because they don't say that they're testing for COVID-19, which is absolutely impossible, as I mentioned before. The NHLS uses a range of machines to do this, some fully automated and some older machines that require separate machines to conduct the extraction process. So it makes the process take longer. And I believe as we have increased the number of tests, that because of the, the time it takes for you to process one of these tests, it's taking much, much longer. And if we had more of the automated machines that could follow the, uh, do the entire process, then we'll be able to churn out more tests in a day. Machines such as the Roche Kabash 6, uh, 6800 and 8800 and the Capite Gen Expert can uh, conduct the extractions and PCR at the same time, but require test kits. The NHLS is on average conducting 60,000 tests per week, which is about 10,000 tests per day, which is way behind what they want to do, about uh, a third of what they want to do, with the kits we have available. Kits that are in short supply are extraction kits and kits for the integrated platforms for the COVAS and Gene Expert machines. The NHLS has adequate kits for PCR machines, but the limiting factor is the extraction kits, said the NHLS. So they need to get extraction kits from the rest of the world. So this process is not as simple as they make it out to be. And it's good that they're discussing details with the public. I actually love the fact that they finally have an article where they explain simple things to the public in a more simple way. And I'm glad that I can bring this news report to you so that you can also understand the process better. News24 previously reported that the U.S. State Department had denied the country was restricting exports of test kits for the GenExpert machines, contradicting statements by Minkese before Parliament. 
Now, our minister in parliament, in any uh, briefing that he's given, you can't trust him because his slides could be old, or he could just not understand his old slide, just after he's been in briefings beforehand with the NCCC, where they've discussed what outcomes will happen. Either he's demented, or he's got dementia, or he's actually losing his mind. I don't know which it is, but he's not doing very well, and he needs to be capable to work in his current position. That is for sure. So, I predicted these spikes, and they in the graphs. I'll attach it at the bottom of of the um, this video, so that you can actually go and look at the link. I do that in all of the videos, and you can actually see this massive spike that all of a sudden came in. This eighteen thousand and sixty-five tests, and just understand that I predict it's just previous tests that were done that came through in bulk on one day. And this is, this is a, a very simple thing to explain. There's no conspiracy behind it or anything uh, fake or false. And it's sad that the headline actually misguides people on this. Please subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell icon. And do look at the articles that I actually cover. Because you can read through them in your own time. Make sense of it. If the video uh, didn't make sense of the articles then have a look at the articles, have a look at the graphs, and actually see for yourself. Make it your own knowledge. Till the next one.